asphyxial deaths. So regarding the classification of asphyxia, we have already discussed that is it is mechanical asphyxia, which is the most important, which is concerned for forensic point of view. Pathological asphyxia, that is because of some diseases. Toxicological asphyxia, that is certain poison interfere with the process of respiration leading to asphyxia. Then environmental asphyxia, that deficient oxygen or the environment has been replaced by other irrespirable gases, that is environmental asphyxia in war gases, sewer gases, they produce environmental asphyxia. Then itrogenic asphyxia during anesthesia, the anesthetic gases are introduced and they are so induced asphyxia because at the level of the uh, cellular membrane, they interfere with the transport of oxygen into the cells. So just we, uh, I went through the uh, types of asphyxia because we are now starting with the most important, which is forensic point of view, the mechanical asphyxias. So mechanical asphyxias are basically due to interference with the process of respiration mechanically. Any mechanical interference with the leads to interference with process of respiration is mechanical asphyxia. And they can be divided depending upon their level of obstruction. And this obstruction that is occlusion from can be from outside or occlusion can be from inside within. The occlusion from outside, it may be either the obstruction at the respiratory orifices level, that the mouth and nose, they are obstructed. That is called as suffocation. And there are other processes like smoothing, overlaying. These are two mechanics which causes suffocation by obstruction or occlusion of the respiratory orifices. Then other occlusion from outside, that is the obstruction at the level of neck. This may be hanging, that the suspension of the body by means of ligature or strangulation. That's the direct pressure applied on the neck either by means of ligature or by other means, by hands, by sticks. So that is strangulation by directly obstructing the neck. Then obstruction in the movement of the chest in stampede because of the press, direct pressure of the other persons compressing the chest and chest is unable to move. And that occurs in stampede and that causes asphyxia because chest is unable to move and the process of breathing in and out is not possible that lead to asphyxia. Then another, a special type of asphyxia which is called as autoerotic asphyxia. When we'll discuss this type in detail, but certain persons having a defective uh, psyche they want to get the sexual gratification by inducing asphyxia. And there is a very narrow line between asphyxia and gratification. So the process may go pass into serious consequences leading to death. So this is a special condition when we'll discuss, we'll discuss in detail. Then occlusion from within at certain objects they are in the lumen and occluded, gagging. Something is introduced into the respiratory orifices in the mouth, behind the nose, the small piece of cloth or handkerchief that is gagging, some thing introduced into the respiratory passages. Then choking. Then any hard material 
a pebble, a coin, or a small piece of bone, or any bolus of food, it enters into the respiratory passage and chokes. And in choking, the size of the uh, that bolus or the object is not matter because it initiates a reflex cardiac spasm and causes occlusion from within. Then drowning. Drowning is also classified as asphyxial death because air is replaced by water. So air is not available for uh, process of respiration. So drowning is occlusion from within where air is replaced by water. The obstruction at the level of neck can further be subdivided into hanging and ligature strangulation. The ligature strangulation can be garroting. Garroting is sudden throwing up rope from behind and compressing on the neck. Throttling, direct pressure on the neck of a ligature by ligature. Mugging, that is the pressing of the neck in the elbow, that is mugging, and bans dola, that is the pressure applied on the neck by means of two sticks, two sticks, and commonly the bamboo sticks were used in certain states or areas, hence after that it is named as bans dola. So this is a strangulation, which is the pressure directly applied on the neck, and that is not the weight of the body in hanging. Then manual throttling by means of hand, that the hands are applied in direct pressure on the neck by means of hand. One hand or the other hand, when we'll discuss in detail the throttling, we'll discuss in that. <clears throat> this is another diagram showing the virus classification of asphyxial death, that is, the compression of the wind tap, pipe by hanging or strangulation, mechanical fixation of the chest in stampede, smoothing, that is the occlusion, uh, submersion of uh, mouth and nostril fluid, drowning, then exclusion of air by suffocation, smoothing, gagging, choking, overlaying, and burking. Burking is a special phenomena I'll discuss in detail. Then twisting up neck in certain games, by the twist of the neck, you can occlude the respiratory passages. Then pressure on the carotid sinus, because slightest pressure on the carotid sinus, the carotid bodies are here at the carotid vessels, and that can initiate the excitation of the vagus nerve and cause reflex cardiac arrest. So little, but little bit about the anatomy of the neck for our understanding. The compression of neck, whether partial or complete, obstructs the blood flow as well as breathing. Pressure on the carotid sinus and vagus nerve. The carotid bodies, they need very slight pressure. They are located in the uh, carotid vessel and it precipitates the reflex cardiac arrest. Then obstruction to the venous turn from the head it causes congestion and hemorrhage in the tissues above the level of neck. This is a diagrammatic representation of the structures of the neck, a cut section. You can see the respiratory passages. This is another view. Just to show that occlusion at any level can interfere with the process of respiration. Either it is at the nostril or the mouth level or at the neck level or the base of the tongue if pushed behind the pharynx. It, uh, against the posterior pharyngeal wall, it can obstruct. This is another diagram, dissected view of the uh, neck. You can see the carotid vessels, jugular veins, and in the center, the most important cartilaginous structure the topmost is the hyoid bone, the thyroid bone, the cricoid bone, and the ligaments which are connecting them, the thyroid and cricothyroid membrane, and below is the uh, trachea windpipe. 
this is a lateral view structure of diagrammatic representation of various important. You can see the carotid artery and at the junction where the carotid body is located. So obstruction to the arterial supply through carotid artery to the head and neck causes anoxia to the brain and unconsciousness. Partial blow, flow of blood can continue through the vertebral vessels because in the vertebral foramina, the vertebrae are placed one above the other and the vertebral foramina, when they are joined, they make a canal in which the vertebral vessels run and partial circulation continues by the vertebral pressure, vertebral vessels. Then obstruction to the windpipe, it causes generalized oxygen deficiency or hypoxia. So these are various mechanics causing various effects. Sufficient pressure is required to stop the airflow in the rigid cartilaginous structure of trachea and larynx. Usually larynx is lifted up so that the base of the tongue blocks the uh, air passage by uh, against the posterior pharyngeal wall on the back of the throat. The tongue is pushed up and back from the base of the uh, neck and it occludes the posterior uh, nasal orifices passages. Then what are the effects of various pressures on the neck? The carotid sinus pressure, as it needs very little pressure, just a blow, just a slight pressure, it stimulates vagus nerve and causes cardiac arrest. Then jugular vein needs only two kgs of weight to occlude them. It will cause congestion and hemorrhages above the point of constriction. Then carotid artery blockage, they need five kgs of weight and their occlusion lead to anoxia to the brain and unconsciousness. Then the airway blockage, as it is a rigid structure, structure it needs about 15 kgs of weight to occlude. It will cause directly hypoxia. Then the vertebral arteries, which are located within the vertebral foramen in the vertebrae, they need higher pressure. About 30 kg of weight is required to occlude them and it will then completely stop the arterial supply to the brain and it first reaches to the brain stem, so which is most vital structures. Then how much tension causes certain weights? That Two kg causes tension approximately 5.4 pounds. Carotid arteries which need five kgs causes tension of 18 pounds. And trachea, 15 kg causes tension of 33 pounds. Vertebral arteries which need 30 kg of weight causes 66 pounds of tension. So the least tension needed to occlude all the structure that is 55 to 10 kg, which causes 10 to 22 kg of tension. So the jugular vein, the carotid arteries, they will be occluded by this much pressure. And the greatest tension which occlude the, all the structure is approximately 30 kg. That ranges from 20 to 40 kg and it causes a tension of 48 to 44 to 40, 88 pounds. Now we will talk about the fracture of hyoid bone. This is important in various asphyxial deaths. We have to study it. And hyoid bone fracture, there are two types of mechanics involved. Direct lateral pressure like this. You are compressing laterally like this. Pressure is applied from the side lateral pressure. This occurs in manual strangulation. And indirect pressure, which is upward and backward by the pull on the limbs of the hard bone. So this is upward and backward pull, which occurs in hanging. 
in direct pull on the limbs. The structures are pushed against the posterior pharyngeal wall and the hoid bone gets fractured. And in manual, the pressure is from directly lateral pressure, compression pressure. So in manual strangulation, there is lateral compression and the fractured ends will be displaced, displaced inwards. The segment will be displaced such, but the ends will be displaced inwards. In hanging, there is backward pressure from the front and the fractured ends will be displaced outwards, ends. This is the greater cornu, for example, and this is the end which is fracturing. It will be, the ends will be uh, moving outwards as the pressure is applied from front and backward and the fracture, the ends of the greater cornu, they are being pressed against the posterior pharyngeal wall and the ends will be displaced outward. Fractured ends will be displaced outward. Whereas in manual throttling, the fractured ends will be displaced inwards. The fracture of hoid bone and laryngeal cartilage, it is seen in high age group because these cartilaginous structures, they get ossified after the age of 40. Before that, they are cartilaginous. So this finding is important after the age of 40 when these structures are ossified and then the fracture will occur and it will be evident. This is a completely uh, ossified hyoid bone, photograph of a hyoid bone. And this is uh, photograph of fractured. You can see the upper greater corner which is fractured in the middle. This is a, uh, though a blur diagram, but a diagrammatic representation. Above is the creek, uh, hyoid bone, in the center is the thyroid cartilage, and below is the cricoid cartilage. And the membrane which connects the hyoid bone with the thyroid is the thyroid membrane, and from thyroid to cricoid is the cricothyroid uh, ligament. So these are the pressures which uh, move the fracture segment inward and ends outward. This is another uh, completely ossified bone. And here you can see the fracture segment has been moved inward, but the ends are protruding outwards. The segment has been displaced inward, but the ends are outwards. This occurs in hanging when the pressure is from front. This is a fresh cartilage at autopsy and you can see the end which is uh, showing the hemorrhagic marks, the fracture. So summary of today's lecture is that in this video lecture, we have learned various types of asphyxia, just a revision and because we are going to start the mechanical asphyxia, so we discussed various mechanical asphyxia types and level of occlusion, occlusion from outside, occlusion from within, and what are various levels of occlusion from outside. It is smoothing, hanging, strangulation, or from within, that is uh, choking, gagging, or drowning. So, we then discussed various amount of pressure which is required to occlude these structures. And briefly, we saw the anatomy of the neck. And then we discussed the fracture of hyoid bone, which is important in various types of asphyxial deaths. Thank you very much. Take care and Allah Hafiz.